Theo? All right, thank you, Jenna. 5.33 is your time. You know, meth is a very highly addictive drug. It's an artificial substance made from toxic materials which can cause serious harm to the makers, users, and innocent bystanders. Katrina Helmer joins us live again from the Myrtle Beach Police Department with tips on what to look out for to make sure that this growing drug problem isn't popping up in your neighborhood. Well, although there are different formulas to make meth, there are actually some main ingredients. The biggest giveaway, though, is noticing when someone has these ingredients in excessive amounts. Now, these ingredients can typically be found in very common household cleaners that are also very flammable. Look for lots of bottles with sludge or hoses in them. Those are what police refer to as mobile labs or shake and bakes. Also, look for lots of cut open batteries and pseudoephedrine or medicine or, or cold medicine medicine or antihistamine, that's actually a necessary main ingredient. So whether you see this in your neighbor's yard or someone buying in bulk at the grocery store, it's important to speak up to your local law enforcement right away. The drug itself is very dangerous. But in addition to the drug, the, the labs themselves also pose a danger, not just to the person that, that is cooking the drug, but also those that are around it. So if you have a neighbor that's doing this, it poses a danger to your house because the labs can easily ignite and cause an explosion, whether they're in the house, a car, or wherever they're cooking at that point in time. They pose a danger to the person cooking and also to the community. Now, meth isn't just dangerous, it's also costly as well. Last year in the state of South Carolina, we've spent $3 million in cleaning up meth labs. Reporting live in Myrtle Beach, Katrina Helmer, WMBF News. We are learning how your students will be impacted by a more than $14 million budget for Horry County Schools. During last night's budget meeting, in fact, school board members talked about speeding up the process of buying a lot of new school buses. This follows several recent breakdowns of those buses with some of your students on board, some district buses more than 20 years old. You know, you, you can go a long period of time and nothing happens, and then over a period of three or four weeks, uh, you have breakdowns in buses and concerns. So I think when those things happen, you tend to look at it a little more seriously. There are also plans to hire more English for speakers of other languages teachers to meet state requirements. The expansion of personalized digital learning devices for elementary students could be a possibility as well. More details on all that coming up at 6 o'clock. Your cell phone bill could end up being more if a proposed bill passes. Right now, state lawmakers and wireless carriers are facing off over this bill. Lawmakers want to add on cell phone fees to help pay for the services provided by landlines. Wireless carries don't support that. Everyone pays into a federal fund, but landline users pay 3% on their bills into a state fund, which cell phone customers don't. The state senator sponsoring the bill wants to make it so that everyone pays about 1%. A Verizon representative says we are already paying enough. This is bad for consumers. It amounts to an increase in what they have to pay for wireless products and services, and so therefore it's, it's and, you know, on behalf of our consumers, we just think this is a horrible idea. Well, last week, several cell phone carriers, including Verizon, T-Mobile, and TrackPhone, sent a joint letter to the Senate Judiciary Committee recommending a stop to the bill. The subcommittee is expected to discuss it in the next few weeks. Today, Governor Nikki Haley will be in Myrtle Beach for that South Carolina Governor's Conference on Tourism and Travel. This is the second day of the event. It goes through tomorrow. Local leaders tell us for the last two years in a row, the Palmetto State has seen a record number of people visiting local towns, eating in our local restaurants, and, of course, playing on our local golf courses. Also playing a role in getting people to Myrtle Beach, advertising campaigns and exposure on TV networks like the Golf Channel. Theater and amusement attractions also playing a huge role in attracting those visitors. An app is helping the West Florence Fire Department protect you during an emergency. The Salamander app, as it's called, is streaming fast, accurate, and real-time information during calls. It allows crew members to be assigned based on their skills at the scene. The system also makes sure that every firefighter is accounted for after the scene is cleared. Each tag firefighter will have a barcode that's scanned. If they are injured, the commanding officer will be able to give EMS crews their medical history and location, of course. The app costs the department about $400 a year to maintain. A full-time firefighter position is open in the PD. A posting from West Florence Fire Rescue says the pay starts at nine seventy-five an hour. You must have a valent South Carolina driver's license and a good driving record. To see the certifications that are also required and benefits, go to WMBFnews.com. We have this information in the story under our local tab.
also hiring PTR Industries. The gun manufacturer is filling positions that it had to cut last summer due to a drop in demand. But now with the industry, uh, the industry is bouncing back. The company is trying to get back to full staff in Aner. They are still four positions available. The jobs are mostly for overnight machinists who help supply what the assembly line completes during the day. If you're interested in applying, you can turn in an application through SC Works. This morning, a 17-year-old Myrtle Beach High School student facing charges after police say she attacked a classmate. It all happened at the Coastal Grand Mall this past Sunday. Tanya Dennison has been charged with second-degree assault and battery. The victim told officers that after getting into an argument and leaving a store, Dennison followed her, grabbed her hair, slapped her, then pushed her to the ground. The victim also claims that Dennison stomped her on the face. The victim was taken to a local hospital. She also told police that Dennison had bullied her since Christmas break. Horry County officials tell us they have no report of any type of bullying filed between those two girls. A woman uh, was bitten so severely that she needed surgery at a local hospital. Horry County police say this one happened at the Sandy Monkey Bar and Grill on Highway 17 Business. They were called to the club for a shooting but found a woman lying on the ground with a lot of blood instead, police have arrested 39-year-old Christopher Campbell. Uh, he's been charged with one count of criminal domestic violence of a high and aggravated nature. Witnesses also told officers they saw Campbell kicking the woman while she was on the ground Sunday. He's being held right now at J. Reuben Long Detention Center until a bond is set. Well, this morning, a panel of lawmakers will ask the nation's top health experts why measles is spreading so fast and what we can do to stop it. NBC's Tracy Potts in Washington with the uh, cities that are seeing the cases of this disease. The CDC is now tracking 121 cases of measles across the U.S. Most, but not all of them, are connected to Disneyland. Measles is now in the Northeast, New Jersey, Delaware, and the nation's capital. Measles is literally a plane ride away. That's Dr. Ann Shuckett from the like, CDC. She uh, testifies yeah, today, along with a pediatrician whose letter went viral. His kids were exposed at Disney but cannot be vaccinated. A new Pew Research poll finds 83% of Americans feel the vaccine is safe. Lawmakers are pushing the shots. There's no reason not to. But even with measles spreading, there's opposition to the government requiring immunizations. What it gets down to is a vaccine, just like anything else in medicine, is a procedure. It's a personal decision. Yeah. Can you call when your results are in? An outbreak at a Chicago area daycare is driving people there who were vaccinated long ago to be tested to see if they're still protected. Just walk in, get the simple blood drawn, and that's it. Reassurance against a virus that's growing. In fact, since that CDC update, we've learned of five more confirmed cases outside Chicago. From Washington, Tracy Potts, NBC News. Well, new at 530, $3 million will go to saving the monarch butterfly. The population of the butterfly has fallen dramatically from a billion strong in 1996 to about 30 million in 2013. The main reason is the loss of milkweed, the butterfly's source of food. It's also where it lays its eggs. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service announced a partnership with the National Wildlife Federation and the National Fish and Wildlife Foundation. The money will help revive and replace habitats. In consumer news, IHOP has combined the croissant and the waffle. Yummy. The hybrid is called the Chris Croissant. It made up, it's made up of 42 layers of croissant dough baked in a waffle iron, then filled and topped with either lemonade cream and blackberries or sweetened cream cheese and strawberry. It's at a limited time offer, however. It's available right now through April 5th. If only there was some sugar in that, huh? Hey, have you opened your email yet this morning? If so, you may have sent a whole lot of information about you back to the person who just sent it. We'll show you how to stop that privacy breach next. And as the rain moves off our radar, low temperatures could have you turning back on the heat. It's all ahead in just two minutes.